All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Highway Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. Um, before we get started, Lori, do you want to do a quick attendance? I will. Um, Linda O'Brien, Brian Backus, Ismat Alam, Janet Wynn, Josh Hawley, Matt Yetto, Bill Lawrence, Councilwoman Jake with Ray Smith, Stan Faminski, and Supervisor Syed. Did I miss anyone? All right, looks like we're good. All right, thanks so much, Lori. Uh, all right, uh, can we get a motion to approve the minutes from the October 7, 2020 meeting, please? Motion to approve. Thanks, can we get a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any, all right. Uh, any opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. Uh, doesn't sound like we have anybody from the public with us this morning. I attended um, the Complete Streets meeting the other day and invited them for some reason. They did not decide to join us at 8 a.m. after the election. Don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, all right, so we'll move on to highway and parks items with Ray starting us off. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. Uh, number three, water breaks, uh, zero water related repairs uh, for the month of October. Um, number four, highway crews. Uh, currently, 100% of our crews are working on um, Loose leaf and yard woods pickup. Um, just to be uh, added, uh, the few trucks that we don't use on loose leaf, uh, the mechanics have equipped with sanders and are parked in the barn so that if we do um, have a little bit of bad weather, we're able to uh, get the streets taken care of at that point. So, um, Ray, can you explain to me the difference between like loose leaf pickup and when they pick up bags or um, cans of, because of, it seems to be two different things. Okay, so loose leaf would be, uh, we have uh, vacuums that are towed by the, by the big trucks uh, with uh, leaf boxes made on the back of the trucks, which is uh, to enlarge the capacity, has a screen gate on the back, and... Uh, you know, so the vacuums, uh, you know, obviously pick up just the leaves that are rake right curbside. And uh, so, yeah, I actually have uh, three crews with uh, three trucks on each crew. So you have nine dump trucks out on the road uh, with three laborers uh, and a foreman on each crew. So, um it's very labor intensive and it's uh, to say the least uh, weather conditions haven't been prime for, for our people, but I give them a lot of credit. They've been out there every day in the rain and in the snow and uh, working very hard. They're working late. Uh, we've been working till dark and we've had to work the last couple Saturdays to achieve uh, getting through the zones on time. Yeah, I've been everywhere I go. They, I, I see them, and they've been out early and and late. So, um, yeah, they are. I know, I know, folks are working very hard. So, thank you for that, and thank them. Um, and then for folks who have cans, there, those folks aren't picking up the cans, right? That's a separate trip. That's is that correct? Yeah, that, that's the Packer trucks, and they are picking them up still, bags and cans. Mm -hmm. um, and there is no set schedule for that. They just. Uh, okay. We're encouraging people to uh, just when they have them full, put them out uh, throughout the summer that the crews have kept up with no schedule in place because of the COVID. But the crews have managed to get through the entire town in a week's time. Um, yeah. So, so that, also. so yes. although there's no schedule, they've pretty much been on key. So, yeah. OK. I just want to make sure that was that was right. So that was my understanding. It was. uh they go, but it's been about once a week. That's the way it's been, and that's the way it's going to continue, I guess, until uh, until the snow hits or whatever. Yeah, until okay. the first heavy snow or December 1st, um, whatever comes first. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. 
on uh, number six um, parks um, have been out cleaning the boulevards I'm sure people have seen them around and uh, mowing the parks as well um, we've been doing some work on uh, the parks uh, grant from Schenectady County uh, started ordering some of the equipment um, for that, uh, a couple of the items are on uh, for the finance agenda. Um, I attached that copy of what we were doing there. Um, we had ordered uh, five benches for picnic tables uh, through very uh, for various parks. <coughs> uh, proposed bleacher purchase for ten cents or ten bleachers <clears throat> and that would be NJPA pricing uh, which is a, a contract um, the other one would be the girls softball netting for River Road um, and that was um, pricing that the, the girls softball had uh, gotten for what they were looking to do along the right field uh, line uh, adjacent to the playground. So uh, that is also on for finance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's uh, from BSN Sport. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody. So this is all money that we are going to front and then the county will reimburse us. Um, also want to take note that the, um, the $8,200 for netting I think that was originally intended to be part of the, um, you know, the, the workup of the uh, River Road Park. But because this is, you know, this came to us via Schenectady County separately, that was uh, something that was reduced. And I also want to note that uh, instead of having to pay for this to go up, um, Ray and his crew, you know, are going to take care of that and save us some additional money there. So just wanted to note that. Thank you. Um, as far as the other items on the list, um, I will work with Matt on number seven, which is uh, youth football. I believe uh, originally when we had talked about doing this, Matt had talked about a grinder pump. So I'll just get the specs from him and some pricing on um, that money that was allocated. Is it, this is for the football field. I, I'm uh, yeah. number seven on my list says material bids, but you're talking about still another uh, item. Seven on the, on the, uh, on the, on the county's list. list. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's for, um, right. For the, up at the football field. Right. Yeah. And as far as, uh, number six on that list, uh, Blatnick park, uh, bathrooms, splash pad upgrade. Uh, I met with Charlie down there last week and, uh, kind of come up with a plan for, you know, ADA uh, compliant sidewalks to enter that bathroom and a little reconfiguration of the uh, privacy fencing out in front of it. So we're going to draw something up um, and get some uh, bids, some quotes for the work to be done there. So that's just going to take a little bit of time, but we're, we're moving forward on them. Um, Do we think we'll be able to get that done this year? Because I know there was some concern about the weather. It might be pushed off to spring for both those last two items you were talking about. Well, even if even if the work can't be done, um, you know, I can't really tell the weather. I uh, can't tell uh, contractors uh, actual workloads. But um, even if we can't get them physically in place for this year, we'll we'll get the quotes and we'll be ready to go first thing in the spring so that it doesn't impact, uh, you know, we can award this um, with, a, with a spring date to do the work so that it doesn't impact the opening of that and we should be good to go. So we pretty much are touching on all aspects of, of this and the resurfacing of the tennis courts, number two on this list and basketball courts I do have some quotes. Um, unfortunately, one of the things we were looking at was uh, Latinx tennis courts or Avon tennis courts. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, some 
for some resurfacing. Um, what I'm getting back is that the, the surface is too far gone for a surface treatment to um, do what we're looking to do. Um, so we may want to look in a different direction for um, maybe a bigger project at another point in time. Um, they just don't feel as if resurfacing um, we may be able to do some little bit of patching and stuff uh, to make them safer than they currently are, but um, I think they've been let go for so long that the, the condition of them warrants maybe a bigger project in the future. Well, that's a shame. Uh, but I guess we'll, we'll, go, we'll you know, continue to talk about that. Um, be nice to be able to make them playable. They're in bad shape. But um, if it can't be done, it can't be done. Well, they may be able to do some repairs, but I don't think it's going to be really what we're – it's a Band-Aid, per se. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, you really have to look at how long would it hold up and is it money well spent to just do that. So we'll have some further discussions on that and uh, go from there. Is the resurfacing likely, all the resurfacing of the courts ha likely to happen in the spring? Uh, more than likely, unless we have a, a, a heat wave. I mean, uh, you know, this weather that we've had lately is, uh, you know, anytime this time of year, you really can't tell. But, you know, it looks like the next week ahead is, is decent weather. So we don't know where we're at um, weather-wise, but we can surely uh, – follow up on these and, uh, you know, if it is applicable, we can uh, move forward with these. Okay. Okay. Uh, number seven is material bids. Um, we're putting together the bid specs now for, uh, we do have the rollover clause. We did do three years of rollovers with the uh, current vendors that we use so this would be you know um, crushed air uh, aggregates limestone sand gravel uh, just materials used in public works um, and this is done uh, both myself and uh, water and sewer use these bids for the materials that we use throughout the year um, this does not include the paving in that. We usually do them closer to the beginning of the year. Um, so that's what this will be. We'll be, be putting it in the paper uh, towards the middle end of November and uh, have a bid opening early December for the December uh, board meeting to be approved uh, if it is so recommended so that we have materials that we can purchase after the first of the year. Okay, thanks. Number eight, speed signs. Um, I've been working with uh, the police department and um, one sign was being put up this morning over on Pierce Road near Maple Lane. Um, locations have been called in for a Wyoming sign so as soon as those come in, uh, those will be put up. If not by the end of this week, hopefully sometime next week. And additionally, I spoke with uh, PD about an additional stop sign at the corner of uh, Dean Street and Lexington. Apparently, um, there was an email sent out about uh, hard to see the sign as you come around the corner coming from Baker Avenue, heading east on Lexington, where you come to Dean. So we're just going to put an additional stop sign on the island side. Um, so as you enter the curve, you can see that. Locations have been called in for that as well. So uh, number nine, I did see an email from NCAP stating that the signs were done. I will get somebody down there to pick them up. Um, 
Hey, Ray, is it easier for them to drop them off? I think we were just trying to coordinate. Um, they're located in Schenectady. Yeah, they're right on the eastern or uh, Van Branken or Eastern, right? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah I just I seen it in the mail the other day. Um, I really just haven't had a lot of extra people. Um, so you know, they could drop them off just to so shorten your to do list. Uh, you know what? It, it's just a matter of finding an hour to go down. I I think they've done over and above to get us the signs. Um, I will get somebody down to get them. Oh, okay. And then we can meet. We meet with them after that for for placement of the signs. Um, like I say, they they've gone above and beyond. I think uh, it's not a big deal for us to to get them, but I will get. Them. Yes, and while we're on the topic of signs, I'm not sure if you guys tuned into the Police and Public Safety Committee meeting yesterday, but there was one item referred to this committee. Um, regarding a sign, I think it was on Route 7 and Supervisor side, if she's on this call, can maybe jump in. Was it on Onondaga? It's where the gas station is. Um, and I think it was more of a planning issue or perhaps parking in the right of way. There was a request for a no parking here to corner sign by a resident. Um, and Councilwoman Cartland asked that your uh, Laura and Ray look at this issue or, and, and see whether or not it warrants a placement of a sign. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I'm not, but I can review the minutes from the PD uh, public safety meeting and uh, I can review it or get together with Laura on that point. So like what we did on Schwaber, it was the same kind of thing, right? They may be there getting a lot of parking there. Yeah, um, probably, probably similar to that. Yeah, uh, obstructed, uh, you know, the residents had said that they have obstructed views when they're trying to make the left hand turn onto um, Route 7, but we thought maybe it perhaps was a um, an issue that maybe Laura would address because the the, the cause of the obstruction is is cars parking uh, on, this, our, on the street in the right of way rather than at the private property at the gas station. We can look into that. Thanks. Um, number 10, uh, winter weather reminders. Um, this was actually, um, brought to attention by Rosemary and, and Alexis, both. Uh, so the no parking on the streets during snowfall and, and winter time, and also, uh, basketball hoops in the, in the right away. And, We've always, um, you know, handed out letters or, um, you know, address violators, but I, I think this is a good idea to post it on a website, the actual rules. So um, this we can uh, look up and do a posting on the webpage. So good idea. Do you have a problem with us also posting um, on the webpage the mailbox damage claim form? I know that came up a couple of times last year where people were just confused about the longstanding policy that's not unique to Niskuna, which says, you know, if unless there's affirmative damage caused by the highway department and uh, plowing and your mailbox was not in the right of way, you know, you know, I'm talking about the $50 claim reimbursement process. Oh, I know. I've been doing them for years, but yeah, I don't, um, you know, the process. Although I know some have questioned it, you know, when you get a, a call that somebody had hit a mailbox, we, we usually send a two liter out to inspect to see if it was in fact damaged by a highway truck or could have been a personal plow or a car that went off the road. <clears throat> a lot of different scenarios. There's a lot of signs that our, our wings and our plows are bright orange. So when we hit a mailbox, it's pretty evident that we did. Um, our, our wingmen actually, if we hit a mailbox, uh, actually put it on their daily report. So we have records of that here at the highway. Um, so, I mean, the pot, you can put something on there stating that, you know, if your mailbox is damaged by a town plow, then, uh, you know, call the highway, but I, I wouldn't recommend putting a hey, this is how you get um, $50 to fix your mailbox. I don't know if that would be 
um, we still have to go through the same process to approve the mailbox repair. So, um, got it. Yeah, I'm just trying to be proactive and avoiding the same um, situations that came up last winter where people said they didn't have advance notice. So I'll draft something and send it to you. But I agree. I have no. I don't think we should obviously change our longstanding policy. Just, right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number 11, personal update, uh, one employee on workers' comp. Um, i just leave that on there. Um, number B is uh, replacement workers' update. I still have one vacancy um, with everything that we're working on and, and trying to finish up the season in that. I really have not had time to interview or pursue this at this time. Um, so when uh, time warrants, I will uh, take the time to get some people in and, and get this done. Number 12, town hall lock system. Uh, been in contact with Charlie. The equipment has been ordered. Um, when TBS uh, is notified of uh, the equipment being delivered, they will set up a meeting with Charlie. Uh, for a walk through uh, and go over the particulars of the, the job and the installation involved in that. So we'll keep you posted on that. Do we have any idea, Ray, when that will happen? Um, how, you know, do we have an estimated uh, arrival uh, delivery time of whatever equ the equipment is? Uh, actually, I just got a text right now that. Um, Tentatively, uh, they should start receiving equipment maybe as soon as next Thursday. So he's going to be trying to schedule a walkthrough for the system probably towards the end of next week, if not the beginning of the week after. So uh, that is moving along. Okay, thank you. And that caught off the press. So I just got that. Okay, um, 13 is uh, Tree Council on Complete Streets, Laura. Um, so Tree Council worked with the highway department on planting like 30 elms or whatever it was at Platinum Park and a bunch of fall trees and the highway department did that wonderfully. And so very much all of them, I know they didn't wanna do that many tree planting in the fall and they ended up planting like 40 trees. <laughs> So that was awesome. Very much thank you. Felt like a big success um, to the tree council. And then the only other thing that they are still working on, and, and I met with Ray out there, is the Blanick Park sign. Um, and he remembered there being um, like Olympic rings on the sign. And so we brought it up at my committee meeting and Dennis Brennan went into the, the historic ar archives down in town of Niskayuna's um, basement to see if he could find a picture of the original sign. And Ray, you're totally right. There was a piece on top of the existing Blatnik Park sign that was the rings. It seems to be missing. So I have a picture of it. So, um, so we're going to take a look at that sign and see what we can do with the sign over time. It's, you know, a low priority compared to all the stuff that's crushing us this fall. Um, but we're going to take a look at it and see if we can help with the sign. And then obviously the tree council angle of this is hopefully we can plant a bunch of trees and things around the sign. <laughs> um, anything to add to that, Ray? The elm trees looked really good, I thought. I like them a lot. Um, Complete Streets has an event that's starting on November 7th and November 14th. We did the email blast yesterday. We um, mailed out to all the residents on the street on Friday that we're going to set up the little temporary chicanes and sharrows and um, a little temporary crosswalk with raised curb simulated things on either side of the crosswalk. Um, I think they're trying to take everything. I, the last time we talked about it at this meeting, I think highway just said they were maxed out and, you know, to, do it yourself. <laughs> so we're working on it. Um, the only thing that we might need if you have some are traffic cones, which um, we can pick up if you are able to donate them to us uh, just for the week. And then we had talked about it at the, this meeting the last time that 
we just need to set up the like construction ahead signs just so that there's that legal notification that there's going to be changes in the road to the drivers. So, um, I, we can set up the signs, Ray, if you have the construction work ahead or if that's Matt, I don't know who has the construction work ahead signs. That's on Regent street, right? Laura. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Digital signs, Laura, or, uh, just traffic signs. I think it's kind of like if we have a water main break or you guys are doing paving, just the, those, you know, those triangle signs that say like, you know, construction work ahead signs. I will look and see what I have in here. Okay. Let me know. Um, we've got tires. We got these little bollards. We've got um, chalk paint. That's for real chalk paint. That's the stuff we used the last time. And then we've got um, duct tape so that we should be able to set these things up so they'll be really obvious and hopefully work. And then we have our already gotten some conversations with people living on that road. Some of them are a little suspicious that it's going to work and some of them are really excited and we're like, okay, well, either way, then we'll know um, and we can continue pursuing this or we can look to other things. So I'm excited about it. Um, and you guys were working on a survey, right? After? Yeah, the survey is there. We are ordering signs so that when people are driving or walking or bicycling through, it's got a QR code and a website. Once the thing is set up, we'll also probably do another email blast for people to do a survey. I did ask the police if it's possible to get a speed sign in within the um, event so that we could, you know, actually have some quantitative data. But otherwise, it's really just a qualitative review of these things. If we can see what they so see if people like them and if they actually feel like they're slowing cars down. If we can get that speed sign, we might have some data to look at because um, I think there was a speed sign on Regent not that long ago. Um, that's kind of up to, you know, wherever the speed signs are and how hard they are to move. I really don't know any of that. It's very nice that, uh, we have, uh, community members who are interested in this and, and, uh, lending their time and talents to this. So, um, it was nice to sit in on that meeting and hear that enthusiasm for sure. CAC is not on here, but I wanted to let you guys know that the CAC for the LOMO initiative that, you know, Rosemary and Ray and I kind of looked at a, a spot in Blatnick Park that we thought would be a little bit easier to not mow um, to see how an initiative like that would work. So we met with the people on River Hill and Catherine's Woods um, over the course of the last two weeks, a uh, couple a couple nighttime meetings, um, talked through some of the concerns. There was um, there's generally speaking um i would say support for a low mo initiative um but they wanted it to definitely between the um split rail fence and the road they wanted that to continue to be mowed and we were like of course because you wouldn't really want the long grass all the way down to the road and there's quite a bit of space there between that split rail fence and them and but once people knew that we would continue to mow that they felt a lot better they did kind of want to see like if we could do a spray of wildflowers like directly behind the fence so that it would look more colorful than just tall grass um so the cdc is looking in to see if they can get plugs donated or whatever that we could do to help with that um and then there was you know just a couple places where they would like to see to be continued to mow as long as it's contiguous with you know doing a path or something um, so we're kind of like honing in on what the Lomo um, area over there would look like and, and building the support for it. But I did want to tell you guys that there is a Frisbee golf hole in that area. Um, I walked it. The, actually, there might even be two. There's like sort of one that's like tucked over in the woods and there's one that's like kind of smack dab between the um, uh, driving range building and like the woods. And so then I was kind of like, do we want to just, I don't know how we want to deal with that. <laughs> I mean, maybe just like pull the Lomo initiative like away from that and then not do anything between that hole and all the way to the golf range. I'm not really sure. Um, maybe when we're finalizing the Lomo ma map, I can meet with Ray or whoever deals with that and see if we can like mow a green or if that's not worth it. And we should shrink the Lomo area so that it's not really interfering with that golf hole. I wasn't sure if you guys had any idea on that. We don't have a license agreement with them, do we? We just, it's more of an understanding that they can use the our property for that purpose. I have no idea. <laughs> well, I'm assuming that we do not have a license agreement unless it's just, I haven't seen it. Laurie or Ray? It's, it's just open to the public. There is right. no group. Yeah, it's just a town facility. So 
they don't have a license agreement, but we probably should maybe mow because it does interfere with the course and people would lose their discs and poor Ray would get a ton of phone calls. Yeah, but where we're talking about, see, I've looked at the map with Laura. It seems like it's off of, separated from where the main, you know, uh, disc golf area is. So it is, it is definitely a hole there. Yeah. So it's weird. It's not where the other ones are. I know where she's talking about because I, because we went through this just the other day. So it's kind of random. Like she's saying these one or two, I, which um, last time we met, you had not identified, but it's, it's separate from where the rest of the course is, which seems really odd. Are they still numbered holes? They are numbered holes and I can get you, I think I have a map of um, the whole course and then I can get you that. You can see how it was laid out and uh, maybe you can take it from there. Yeah. I don't Maybe it is part of it, but it seems quite separate from the other. Okay. So um, once we get this finalized, like Laura said, maybe we will all just sit down and go through the map together, everybody who's who needs to know, and just get you know clarity on what's the area. Because again, part of this is because they were, you know, the folks were sort of interested in the larger area where the disc golf is up on the cap, and we were trying to find other areas. Uh, to, you know, an, allow this sort of initiative to go forward that didn't interfere with the disc golf and the mowing and the cap ish, you know, issues with the cap, et cetera. So, um, so this is separate. This is down on the other side of the driving range, you know, like, like she said, backing up to, um, what is that? Is that, Ro is that Rose Hill, Laura? Um, River Hill. River Hill. Sorry. So again, it's, it's separate. It's not by the kids. It's, it's separate from the cap. So we'll just sit down and go through. Was the area that we like had said? Sorry, I lost my super fancy keys. But um, it looks like when you like this part, everybody seemed okay with. Generally speaking, except it, they didn't want the they wanted it mode between the split rail fence, which is like up in here, and to the road. But it, if I I can just pull this away, there's like actually there's like a golf hole, like maybe in here. And then there's like another one that goes out into the woods over here somewhere. Um, so like maybe we just need to shrink it down for now so that it's like kind of only like this. Like if I put this back, it would be like, you know, like just here for now. I don't know. Um, happy to work with anything you guys need really. Yeah. So like I said, maybe we just sit down afterwards once it's been, you know, we've got a, an area targeted. We'll just sit down, uh, everybody who needs to be in the room to know which area and um, and get clarity on that. Again, I was, I'm surprised that there that there's um, disc, maybe they're old remnants of a prior. I don't know, because the rest of them are up on the cap and up that way. It just seems weird. But with what Lori go with the map, we'll, we'll figure it out. Well, good work. Like they like the mode path idea. Um, they liked, you know, they, you know, they liked. Um, most of them did like the idea of promoting, you know, pollinator friendly habitats, stuff like that. So, needs a little more work, and maybe we could roll it out in the spring. Okay. Well, great work. Thanks, Laura. Again, all, all these great, all this great uh, energy and enthusiasm, and uh, you know, time and talents of people dedicated to these initiatives—it's great. Um, anything else under those topics? Because the next one is just an update. If anything on on Knott Street, I started writing the RFP this morning because I looked at the agenda and I was like, oh, I'll, so I'll try and get it out by the end of today. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And I haven't heard anything uh, different from the county. I mean, it's still supposed to start in the spring and I know the target is to be done by, you know, fall, uh, you know, where they to um, have, you know, the business not, is uh, not interrupted at that time going into, uh, into the fall season. Uh, so yeah, that would be good. Um, I'm paying for it uh, though, out of the, um, um, like the leftover grant writer account in my planning budget we were talking about paying for it out of there which isn't going to roll forward so yeah. so if i can have it done i'll try it so that we could award it on the 19th and then you know, hopefully spend the majority of the money in december so that you should talk to 
you just should talk to Isma and Janet about Thank that. Because yes. I think they're looking at, you know, all uh, line items right now. Um, so this is, uh, you know, Isma and Janet, this is, uh, we've been talking about this for months about, um, and, you know, the county is undertaking uh, a renovation, you know, safety improvement plan on the Knott Street corridor in front of the co-op. Um, and in connection with that, we hoped to save some money by doing some uh, potential reconfiguring on, um, you know, on a crescent, I know was sort of a target and we needed to hire an engineer to do some assessment. So anyway, uh, we've been, it's sort of been pending for a while as Laura just mentioned. Um, but yeah, there, you should talk to Ismat and Janet about, about that. Uh, cause I think they're searching for money everywhere right now. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I mean, I did talk about it. And when we were talking about dividing it up and Denise was at that meeting too, so. Well, let's talk about it, Laura, um, later. I am working from home. Um, I did, I haven't received my uh, test yet, COVID test, so um, we can touch base later. Okay. Um, and then the next item is uh, River Road Construction. Uh, Laura, can you give us an update on what's going on with that? Um, yeah, so we have a pre-construction meeting set for today. We did do a notice to proceed. Um, I, I had talked to Ray because neither him nor I really remember um, when they decided to take a bunch of work out and dedicate it to the town, um, but they did. And I think that that was a cost-saving thing that they did in like May. Um, and so, um, it's kind of like the very first items that need to be done before the contractor can get out of there, get out there. Um, and it's like silt fence and taking down the existing fence and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we can talk about it at the meeting today or like we can talk about it here. I guess like if Ray is completely overwhelmed with the, um, the leaf, I did go to the, the contractors and I said like, what would it cost for you guys to do this? And it is about 20, thousand dollars which i went to the engineers and i said is that like exorbitant or is that about right and they said that that would be what their engineering estimate of the work was so i say to ray that he's very valuable i think that the um the engineer's estimate or at least the bids that came back for putting in the um the protective fence for the playground was like 20 or thirty thousand dollars too which he's taking on through that schenectady county project so i mean you're talking about saving like for you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars through work that the highway department is doing on this project, um, but obviously being sensitive to what he needs to accomplish in the fall versus you know this project, um, I, I you know I kind of like felt around yesterday to see if there was a way that we could get twenty thousand dollars, and yeah, I don't think we can. <laughs> so then, <clears throat> so then you know. I would think that either the project moves to spring to when we have the time to do the construction ourselves, or, you know, we can talk about it with the contractor again today at the meeting. Um, that's what we're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to um, have, have everybody understand what was, um, what was going on with that. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I don't have any further information on that. I, um, did talk to you, Laura, yesterday about this, and um, uh, Ray. I tried to connect with you as well, just to get a sense. And uh, you know, we know you're you're out there, and your crews are out there doing a lot of things that save the town a lot of money. Um, this is case in point, right? I mean, this is the kind of stuff we bring in house. I just mentioned the fence, the uh, the netting earlier. You know, we were able to take that off the bid because you guys are able to do um, do the work and save uh, save us some money. So I guess it really just comes down to whether or not um, it's possible to get done uh, in the fall or not, because I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I don't think we have that extra money. Um, the, everyone was around for the discussion of um, when Laura first came back and, you know, we went over bid on this, we had to cut even, you know, more items and, um, for it, so we'll just, you know, I, 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 yeah, we'll have to see. I suppose you guys will discuss it further at the construction meeting, and Isma and Janet will have to, um, you know, weigh in here. I don't know, Ray, if you have money in some other, you know, line in your budget. Again, you'll have to 
um, discuss it unless you want to discuss it here. You can we discuss it at the at the construction meeting. Um, I just was trying to give everybody an update on where those things stood. So, I think one of the issues is Rosemary that originally in the plans, um, the silt fence and all that was to be done by the contractor. You know, through shaving money and everything, um, you know, somehow it got flipped back onto us. I mean, I just heard about the change last Friday. We were supposed to have a meeting Monday, which was ultimately changed till today. But um, the problem being is um, the work that was flipped onto us has to be done before the contractor can start. We approved this contractor because we thought there was enough time here in the spring to get going. And I think he was free enough to, to start doing the work. Um, which we thought would be beneficial to us. But um, with this change, uh, like I said, 100% of my people are out on the road trying to accomplish the leaf pickup. And, you know, we're, we're working late nights till dark and we're working weekends. So there's, there's not even really a way for me to, uh, you know, say come in on a Saturday and do this. I, my, my personnel is already obligated to um you know our pickup so the timing's bad um as far as us being able to get this done and get the contractor started so um i i really don't it, it's just a change that came and and is too uh yeah, it's time sensitive for them to get going. I, I just don't have the time to commit to that right now. Yep. So a decision will have to be made if the if we don't have the money to um, get it done, then it's you're you're right. It's the, something that needs to be done before the contractor can work. Then we'll have to push it off into the spring, and that may change. That may change. You know, a lot of things. I and mean, when we talked about this. Uh, um, you know, there was a push. Laura was pushing, obviously, to get this done to take advantage of pricing now, not anticipating pricing new better, better in the spring. And also the fact that the fall was a better time of year in terms of not interfering um, with, you know, with, um, with other things that will be a problem if we push this off to spring. Um, so I don't know you guys are going to have to continue to, you know, to, to, you know, to talk it out if the money can't be found and you don't, and you can't do it, then, um, then, you know, it seems like it's going to have to be pushed off in the fall. But of course that, you know, it's going to create other, uh, other issues. I don't know if we can lock in, we won't be able to lock in the price. And, and I, and again, my understanding is doing the work in the spring causes, you know, other problems, which is why we wanted to do it in the fall. Um, so, you know, again, I don't know when, I don't know when the decision was made to, you know, uh, to, to, that we would take that on. I know, I know we cut a lot of things, but I don't think it was part of the recent cut. I mean, the the bid that came back, you know, at five sixty or I guess it was over six hundred. It wasn't that. I mean, what we took off from that last round was the public facilities, as I recall. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't this. So I don't know. I don't know when this was decided, but and the timing is the timing. You know, what are we going to do? So I guess have some further conversation at your uh, construction meeting, and um, but. And 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 work with our controller to see if there's anything that can be done. Otherwise, um, we're, we're we are where we are. I understand that you guys are working around the clock, and as noted, you you guys continue to save us money by doing a lot of things. We don't have to subcon, we don't have to contract out. Um, but this one is time sensitive, and uh, and I don't know how long would it, you know how, how many people would it take, and how long would it take to do this work, Ray, to get this field ready. To get the fields ready. Um, I really didn't see the scope of work that was supposed to be talked about at the meeting. Um, I got the the paper part of it, you know, explaining what obligations were the towns and what ours, but I I didn't see any blueprints of the exact amount. Um, I I'm assuming that we have to buy the materials, the silt fence, and all that stuff as well. I correct me if I'm wrong, Laura. I, are we supplying this also? Yeah. I, yeah. So 
So I guess you better look at that. I mean, maybe in connection with this next meeting you're going into, uh, Laura, you know, go through so Ray can assess, you know, what it would what it would take, and then a decision has to be made. Obviously, I mean, obviously, if he's doing the self fence with however many guys for how much time, that's time away from the leaves. That you know, but I but I, it doesn't sound like he you know he needs to take a look and have an understanding of what would be involved. Yeah, I I mean I apologize for this one. I it I think the decision was made in May, and I was looking at it like um, you know I believe that it was made uniformly between everybody. I'm not a super good note taker though, so I don't have any notes. And I agree, I totally sprung it on Ray because I had forgotten. Um, but it was very clearly made at the beginning of 2020 to take the stuff out of the contract. And if I had been paying more attention, I mean, when I emailed it to you, Ray, I would have said, okay, this is the stuff that you're doing. I, you know, the engineer reminded me that the town had duties on this project. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I had that very similar reaction to what you had, you know, like a couple hours before I mentioned it out to you. And I completely agree. The timing is absolutely 100% horrendous. And, um, you know, I would just, you know, I don't know if it's matter, Yasmin, like, if you have any ideas, you know, to help, like, maybe, like, you know, if we have some money somewhere and we could, just, you know, contractor put up the silt fence and then the highway department could take down the fencing when they get a chance. Like, the two big things are putting up the silt fence and taking down the existing chain link fence. So the two big things. See, it seems um, like you guys should probably talk about this at the, the meeting you're going into afterwards, though. So, and, um, yeah. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll we'll move on from here, but you're, you're having that meeting anyway, so maybe we've introduced the topic, but uh, I guess work through it in that in the in your in your pre-construction meeting. Um, okay, uh, let's move on to the uh, licensing agreements, Alexis. Yeah, so um, this is with regards to the Avon Crest Park license agreement that was tabled last um, last meeting. There was a last minute change um, that we have yet to have a chance to negotiate, and it doesn't seem as that it's, it's as time pressing, given um, the discussion we just have. But um, long story short, and Laura, feel free to jump in. The Schooner Girls Softball League had asked that in consideration for paying for the drainage of one of the softball fields in connection with the River Road Park construction project that we would. Um, give them the ability to use Avon Crest, which is fine, but we just need to work out the payment terms and you know when exactly they'd be paying us back, installments, if there'd be interest, et cetera. So I would, right. It's like $45,000, right, that the softball club is taking on. And again, I think the intention is still to do the improvements at Avon Crest and continue to and maintain, take over maintenance of it, et cetera. Um, but instead of paying us, they were talking about like a $500 a year licensing fee in consideration of the fact of them taking on um, the uh, additional 45000 for the drainage issue of Field 1, I believe, at River Road Park. They asked um, to not, you know, to, for us, you know, not to charge them the extra $500 a year. So Alexis, yeah, you're right. That it's not as time sensitive, um, but you're still working through that with um, softball. Um, okay. So yeah, that's the update there. And then the second one is we were approached by a um, Muskegon youth children's uh, basketball training program that would like to start planning for April and May outdoor sessions. So they were interested in doing a license agreement for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, beginning April 12th and running for six weeks um, to use the basketball courts at River Road Park. I know in the past we haven't used those um, for license agreements, but it seems like it's a, a good area with a lot of parking. Um, but Ray, that said, is this one of the areas that's going to be um, resurfaced? Because I want to make sure that any license agreement isn't conflicting with that schedule of stuff. Yeah, the, when they resurface, Alexis, it's minimal time. It's maybe one day. So if, if that is true to be, um, then we can just uh, make a alternate day or something. Or, uh, you know, it looks like Fridays are free. You know, surfacing is all weather dependent also. It has to be dry, warm. So we can kind of get, uh, work around that schedule, I believe. So uh, yes, and I, um, think I think tentatively you could you could make this agreement. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's during a time period that's not like a peak season for River Road. It's before, well in advance of the playground camps. And um, one thing that they had asked is that in, in light of the fact that they only offer this program for Niskuna residents, um, for their children in Niskuna, they were wondering if we would reduce our, not our normal, but our custom, I guess, fee that we've been charging um, for outdoor basketball courts the past year down from 35 to, to 20. Um, and I think that's reasonable. It would be end up being uh, about $2,000 for six weeks. Like I said, two hours a night for an otherwise underutilized area um, with the two additional uh, renewal periods that perhaps we could ask in those, you know, increase of a couple hundred dollars. But would that be okay with this committee? I mean, I think, like I said, it's, we shouldn't charge uh, the same fee if it's a less demand. Um, I, I'm okay with it. Again, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to know, obviously, that um, I, I read the email uh, that you, you that was directed to um, both of us, Alexis. Um, obviously, with COVID, and we, we saw this, there's been a higher demand on our spaces. And, of course, that means more work for our highway and parks crews um, uh, to maintain those spaces. A couple of issues. So, you know, the, you know, facilities usage. And also trash has continued to be a big thing. It was a big thing we saw through the spring and, you know, summer. Um, I went one time to pick up the key from somebody who had, you know, we had a licensing agreement with and he had, you know, he had arrived and picked up, he and his children picked up, you know, two bags of bottles and I took them. Um, I ended up getting them recycled. But so that's a big issue. I think we need to emphasize, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, carry in, carry out aspect. And it seems like, you know, we, we in emphasize it, but it still continues to be a problem. So we need to recognize that that's an added burden on our crew. Um, and also, we're, you know, we're, uh, we obviously, we want to be here to serve our town residents. And it, it's, you know, the fact that this group is Niskiuna kids. And the reason they're looking for the courts is because the schools are not available. I remember I went back and looked at that email. It seems like they, I don't know if they get it for free or something, some way reduced charge. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so, they'd be paying doubles. So they were saying that they would have to increase the fee charged back to the student parents. Yeah. 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 Really we want to be cognizant of that, but also know that I think we'll get, we're going to, we might get a lot more of these kinds of demands. In other words, not demands, you know, uh, you know, requests, I should say, sorry, not uh, so, so, so we, so that's going to continue. Um, and again, we want to make sure that we have the spaces, not only for these groups to facilitate our youth, but also make sure we still have spaces for, you know, folks who just want to use it, our taxpayers at any given time. So it's kind of a balance. Um, I understand it's a sort of um, a less utilized time frame. Um, what was it? Six weeks yeah. from again? It starts Monday, April 12th, and it runs to the week before Memorial Day, so May 20th. Okay, yeah. So that is the time people are gonna start coming out. Um, you know, I just don't wanna book up all of our, um, I understand it's good, it's revenue. Obviously the revenue is good for us. Um, and also uh, offering um, our facilities to our residents is important, um, but just a balance as we move forward and all these other things, again, the use. Um, so, um, that those that's my that's my input on it and I don't know if anybody else wants to speak to it Lori maybe you too because you, you know you get requests you you know for so I haven't heard anything I think it sounds like a great idea and it is early in the season um, I don't know will it, how many does he plan on taking and will the parking be an issue with softball because that's when softball starts and I'm sure I know they're separated a little, but that's the only concern I'd have. I think that he's running a relatively small program spaced out Monday through Thursday of the week. So it's just you know, one, probably two sessions, I'm assuming. Um, it's just one basketball court at River Road Park. So it can't really fit that many people. Um, they okay. don't want to need to use the bathroom. And we could include in the license agreement, perhaps a steeper you know, deposit fee that they don't get back if we identify more than one or two instances in which they Failed to abide with by our carry in and carry out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's get a number though to Lori's point to make sure we're not um, right. This, it sounds like it's probably a small group given that it's just one court, but let's ask about that and have that maybe have that um, stipulated in there. And I, I think the idea of a, a deposit for the carry in, carry out issue and if there are violations, we keep it. That's 
that's fair. That addresses the that burden. Yeah. So April feels for from forever from now, but they want to enter into this. I think they're trying to plan. It's only five months from now. So this, I think, would be a proposed resolution for maybe the December meeting. Okay. Alexis, one quick question. You said they want a lower fee. Yeah, so the hourly fee that we based it off of for, I think it's not as if it was a long past practice, just the license agreements we've inter entered into this summer that involved basketball courts. We, we took up the, the fee charged for rental of pavilion courts at that facility and used that as a base metric to calculate what an hourly rate would be to rent uh, the basketball courts that are um, aside those right next to those pavilions. So it was about, I think, $44 at Avon Crest Park, maybe 35 at Blotnick. Um, River Road, they were saying, as um, Councilman Jake with has said, it's 35 would be too expensive for them because they, they were using the facilities um, for $10 um, prior to COVID. So are we going to open it to other potential? Um... So we have to enter into subsequent license agreements. And I mean, I, I don't, I think as long as we're, you know, transparent and we're negotiating them, and like I said, it's going through the committee process, the, the public record of, you know, why we would settle at a fee. It's not being, uh, you know, treating other organizations unequally if we subsequently charge, you know, them more than the, the $20. Um, but yeah, it would be $2,000 for six weeks. With, yeah, you know, this is a, I'm, I raised it for the very reason, you know, Ismat, I'm, I'm concerned about that too. I know at the school district, for example, though, they have different fees depending on the type of organization. So if it's a you know, if it's a student base, a student base, if it serves the students, it's one rate. If it's like a community base, is another rate. If it's outside the community, there's a third rate. So it would be good to develop and maybe publish. Like you know, again, you could look. Uh, Alexis, uh, the school district has like a facilities handbook, and those mm -hmm. uh, that pricing is set forth. And so, if you're this kind of group, you pay this. If you're that kind of group, you pay you know a yeah. different fee, etc. They also at the district have to account for custodial you know cleanup because when they have folks that you know they we have they, they have to pay for overtime etc for custodians so i think it's a fair point which is why i raised it and ismat's picking up on that i am concerned you know at least we want to know if they're if we're going to uh charge a different fee based on the fact that it is niskiuna students it's serving niskiuna residents and it's because you know, they're used to paying $10 an hour to use the school district facilities and those school district facilities this year are not available to them because of COVID. Okay, you know what I mean? But long term, we should just have set rates and, sh and we can gradate them, you know, by category or by, by group, et cetera. But it would be a good idea uh, to work on those. Like Ismat's working on, look, you know, redoing rates in a, you know, in our building department right now, right? And those are going to be- yes publish rates it would be a good idea to move towards a published rate schedule um, for our parks and recreation facilities um, so that would be a good project right i think everybody you know would agree with that that would be a good thing to move toward yeah that, that sounds really good because that way you know we are not um giving one rate to one group and then a separate a separate one to the other group so that way will be consistent right right thank you in this instance, we're talking, we are openly, obviously, very transparently talking about a lower rate because of the circumstances, because they're used to paying their, their, their NISCUNA residents, their students, they're used to paying $10 an, uh, an, an hour uh, at the school district. And because of COVID, they won't, you know, those facilities are closed, not available to them. Um, and if we charge a higher rate, that's only going to be passed on to our very own residents. And will it affect, you know, will it... Uh, affect the ability for some students to participate possibly and we don't want to do that we want to make sure that um all students um are you know all kids have the same opportunity so it's again it's a balancing a balancing act but we should toward move toward a you know public excuse me a published um schedule and again we can do it depending on what kind of group it is we can have different rates but um anyway anybody else have any input on this any other thoughts or are we uh, in agreement that given the circumstances that we are okay with moving forward with this $20 an hour rate for this for this time only? And again, that that's something that we're gonna move towards published rates, and et cetera. 
um, I, I'm I'm good with that as long as you know we make it clear that this is the only one and this is only one time thing. Okay, so I will go back to them with that, and I'll make it clear that you know um, I, I will just charge it not an hourly rate, but at a fixed fee, you know, based on the anticipated number of hours that they intend to use it during the term. So it would be like a two thousand dollar flat license fee, not um, spelled out as twenty dollars, and also. I'll make it clear that if they want to exercise their right to renew it for another six week period subsequent to the expiration of the first term, that it would be at an elevated rate, which we can maybe discuss offline. So it's, we don't bore everybody to death. Yeah, and because that'll enter into the period where there'll be more use, et cetera. So, um, okay. Anybody else have anything else on this? Okay. Thanks. Um, let's move on to recreation, right? All righty. For November uh, and December events, our ski club opened and closed registration. Uh, we filled it up with 32 uh, participants, which was awesome. A couple of um, bunches of siblings, um, which means that we only have one bus, which is perfect because uh, Julie was the only supervisor. So we're thrilled. Um, she's just waiting to get the contact list from West Mountain and she's gonna reach out to them and start accepting the um, payment for the bus transportation. So we're happy that this got off the ground. We had no idea if it was gonna be something that people would wanna do in light of COVID, but um, we're able to space them on the bus. They're wearing their masks. And I know West Mountain has a bunch of um, protocols in place as well. So we're happy that this was able to go this year. Um, Parents Night Out, another program that we were thrilled we were able to offer. Uh, we modified this instead of having one night with 40 children. We have four separate nights, which are a Friday and a Saturday on the uh, first two weekends in December. We're allowing 12 per. We have four different uh, Disney movies that are being shown and um, doing an arts and crafts project. Um, the Arts and Crafts Project and the Parents Night Out is being sponsored by um, the Community Foundation. So they once again stepped up to the plate and have been a, um, a big help. So they're going to help. Um, they're going to pay for the any supplies that we need for the Arts and Crafts for the program. So we're thrilled about that as well. Um, Toys for Tots, which kind of plays into Parents Night Out. That's the... Um, the fee for attending. Each child has to um, bring one unwrapped toy for Toys for Tots. We just received our boxes yesterday and we're an official host site. The box itself will be held in the vestibule and I'll bring it in and out every day just so we don't have an issue with people seeing a huge box of toys uh, just beyond the glass door. Um, and last year we were able to fill three or four boxes. We're hoping to be able to do that again. And lastly, things of my very own. Um, we spoke with them. Well, actually, Lisa spoke with them yesterday. They're a little behind on gathering information and getting their gift tags together because of COVID. They haven't been able to have people come in and fill out the requests. And plus, they've been overburdened with the number of re requests. But they're working on the tags, and we should be getting them shortly. We are going to do these digitally this year. So when people reach out to us, we can send them a tag, and then they will, in turn, take the present and deliver it themselves to things where I very own. This, um, I'm hoping that we were able to go through a bunch of tags this year because I know it's gonna be a tough year for a bunch of families. So we were happy to be able to make this work as well. Um, yeah, really 18 is, yeah, we're thrilled. Yeah. Um, 18 is sponsorship, sponsorship ad revenue initiative. We touched on this last meeting. Uh, we then had a uh, separate meeting about this. Um, it's something that we definitely want to move through um, and formulate. Lisa made a beautiful book on sponsorship ideas, and now we just have to come up with a fee structure. And after the first of the year, we'd like to hit the, uh, the ground running and start um, soliciting um, ads for banners, for um, sponsorship of T-shirts. And I know I spoke with Ismat and Janet, and they're working on a separate line on um, the budget so we can post our revenues there. So yes. I'm kind of excited. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I just, we did, a, thanks for that. I, I, I We've been talking about, we talked at the last meeting, as you said, we've uh, had a separate meeting offline. I just want to, and I've mentioned it, and I'll continue to mention, I just want to highlight, again, the effort that you guys have uh, make, are making to, you know, um, make a positive impact on the town uh, budget bottom line. You're setting a goal 
uh, to raise some revenue. Yep, we're going to make sure that's highlighted and should be in, a se in separate revenue lines, um, as should all of our sponsorship monies, just to show you know that um, what it is. So again, I, I commend the work of you and your staff uh, toward taking this additional uh, work on to raise um, money to effectuate the bottom line in a very positive fashion. So thank you again. Um, and number 19 is an update regarding the installation of the UVC fixtures at the rec center. I spoke with Charlie last week. The four fixtures have been ordered and he said they should be um, in and installed within the next three to four weeks. So it's perfect for um, any winter exercise programs for the seniors. So we're hoping to get them up and running as soon as this is installed. So I can keep you updated. Hopefully by the next meeting, they should be up and going which means now the upstairs can be utilized for bocce and exercise and whatever they want to have upstairs lectures. So we're very excited about this. Lord, on this, is it, or I was thinking about this and someone approached me about this. I haven't had the conversation yet about the use of the senior center um, for other purposes. I don't know how busy it is and how busy that space is, but it would it be something that we could open up to others. In terms oh, yeah, of we we do rent it out just like we do with the pavilions. It's yes. um, I can't remember the hourly rate, um, but you do have to have a rec supervisor there the whole time. So that's factored in. So they open up, they supervise and they close up and clean up. Uh, but yeah, we definitely we rent it out to parties. I know GE always has their newcomers event there, um, which is a is very popular for them. Um, sometimes birthday parties. It's a nice big open space. I wouldn't say it's hugely utilized, um, but it does get some use. So yeah, once this is up and running, we're good to go to start accepting reservations. What's the um, what's the hourly fee? I think it's 50. Don't quote me, I'm not 100% sure. All right, it I'll get back to you. I'm gonna might, have a terrible yeah. conversation. Again, I'm trying to drum up business as well. So um, I'll talk to, I, I haven't connected with the person that reached, uh, you know, reached out to me for use. Um, so I'll have that conversation and I will, uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks. Yeah, I'll look at it as soon as we get off the line and right, I'll thanks. let you know what it is. Thanks. And as far as, um, I have no resolutions for this month. We're winding down. So we're good. Okay, great. Thanks. So senior program updates. Linda, are you still with us? Yes, I am. I am. I am. Um, speak, I'm going to just stay on the same page with the, the new filtration system for a minute um, and just give you guys an update. So we are continuing to do exercise and it's been um, all Zoom. Um, and people are anxious. We are getting some feedback. People are anxious. So this is a really going to be a really good news story, a really welcome addition um, to keeping that upstairs space safe because it's starting to get chilly. <laughs> Our bridge members were a little, a little, you know, whatever when they came when they were done yesterday. <laughs> they didn't have icicles hanging from the nose, but they were, they were a little chilled. So um, we have, you know, we're like, hang in there. We got good news coming, and we have uh, space heaters that we can provide for them to keep them warm and you know, um, all kinds of stuff. So that's happening. Um, we're hoping Edie's been in contact continually with our instructors. Some of them are willing to, to come on back in and get, ro you know, rolling. Others are a little more hesitant. That seems to just be in, you know, on a, even par with population as a, as a whole. Um, so we already have for January, we have um, hybrid classes set up for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, our Tai Chi has already begun. Um, and again, that's because we can still keep the windows open upstairs while we wait <clears throat> for this installation. Uh, we're, so we're trying to grow that program. That used to be really popular. Um, and when COVID hit, it kind of, you know, it was a punch in the gut. But um, Connie, one of our residents comes in and she does it 10 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday. So we're back. We're back trying to get that rolling. So December is going to be, we're waiting to see. De December will probably be a hybrid month too. Um, January, we're definitely, we're definitely ready. Um, and hopefully that will just continue to grow. Um, we began with Gershon's. We started our relationship with them. Uh, last Thursday, we did an Oktoberfest, which was considered a specials meal. So it was a little more robust than what we would normally do on an average Tuesday and Thursday. We had 30 reservations for that. Um, it was a, a 
a hybrid also of eat in take out. Um, we yesterday we had another 30 reservations. Um, people seem it, it seems to the whole program seems to be well received. Um, Gershon's is very nice to work with. We've um, worked hard to kind of automate the process and so far so good. So we also began our a la carte options. So we have like hot beverages, sweet, salty snacks. We have fresh fruit, like seasonal fruit. And we've put a price list together. Vito's managing that. He, it, he, it is not self-serve. So he handles all of that. And it's been working out. It, again, it worked out really well yesterday. So Linda, yeah. Linda what have the seniors thought about the Gershon's meal so far? What's been the feedback on that? Great. I mean, Great. they've been really, yeah. And I think they, um, I think it's going to, we want to kind of let it roll for a month and then maybe kind of do a survey or, you know, a short survey just to kind of get feedback. Yeah. More okay. specific. Okay. Right. So, but we are the best deal in town for what you're getting. <laughs> So oh, yeah. we keep telling everybody. <laughs> you guys negotiated yeah. a great, that was a great pricing. Absolutely. Oh, and, tr yeah. and and savings, you know, savings to the program. So really good, good. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad we were able to do that. And I, you know, Tony has really, she gets a lot of credit too, because she's just, she's willing to work with us and they've been really super so far. So very nice. Um, you, you should, so as far as attendance goes overall, we still average about 20 people a day. And that does not include drive throughs that we've had for the box lunches that CDPHP provided us. Um, and then when we, had, when we had the holiday meal, we had closer to 30. And it's an ebb and flow kind of a situation. So we have a, a portion of folks that come and sit and stay and they play cards. They, you know, or they... Um, have games or crafts, um, and then we have another group that just they, they come in and they, for whatever reason, you know, they come in and socialize for a little while, and then they've got appointments or what have you, or they'll um, go upstairs and do tai chi and then stop down. So it's it's been really nice, and it's more of what we wanted to see, and it's and it it kind of is a nice balance too for people that are still a little nervous because of COVID, but they still have a place to get out and pop in, or they they have a reason to get up and get dressed in the morning. And that's a big thing. So we're, we're pleased about that. We just want to, you know, see it continue. So, and just so that you know, the feedback from the public, our public has been, um, it's been positive. They're uh, very appreciative of the fact that we're not only providing a place, that, but that we're making an effort to create um, an, a welcoming environment for them and that we're, we're trying to come up with safe activities during this COVID, what have you, okay? Yeah, you guys so, have done done fabulous. If you you know through the whole thing, you've done a fabulous job, and you continue to adapt and uh, doing a wonderful job in servicing the needs, the uh, social emotional needs <laughs> and, and health and the uh, welfare needs of our of our senior residents. So um, again, you know, it's, draw your efforts. Uh, you're so welcome. It's a challenge, but it you know that's it's it's fun to really try and figure it out. And just get up and try. And I'm just, it's just so nice that this is a good news story for the town. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. Um, for November, we have um, a women's, we just had a women's health lecture yesterday that was really fantastic. It was Blue, uh, Blue Shield came in and did it. Um, we have a Zoom felting demo that Edie's going to do on Thursday. It's a really cool art form. And she's, uh, she's got like, um, three or four signups right now, but you can email her or you could call us and we'll, she'll send you the link if, if anybody's interested. Um, she's also got a couple of art projects set up for this, um, this month with our residents. We have music and entertainment. Um, this woman, Judy Merriman, is going to come in. She's a singer um, and she does musical theater. Uh, and we're, we've also asked her to include some patriotic songs as um a nod to Veterans Day. So she's going to be joining us on the 12th. Uh, we have the National Guard coming in on the 17th uh, and they do a preparedness talk and everybody seems to enjoy them quite a bit. Uh, we also have an Eddie lecture uh, on home safety and that's on the 19th. And then we're going to do another holiday meal. We, what we decided to do is kind of uh, bridge the gap between Thanksgiving and Christmas and just do one holiday meal on December 8th. And so um, Tony over at Gershon's has put together a menu for us and we'll, you'll see us promoting that too as we go. 
So um, what else? We're winterizing. Um, <laughs> we're doing our form of winterizing, which is just, you know, pulling in umbrellas and chairs and hoses. And, you know, we mulched all the new plantings that we put in this year. So that's, that's happening now. Um, we're happy to have another week of 60 degree weather. Um, and we just continue to use those hanging screens on the doors and we do pop, you know, we do keep them open uh, along with the ceiling fans. So the downstairs is well ventilated and, um, you know, we pop the windows open upstairs as well, but hopefully we won't need to do that as much. So I'm trying to think, have I forgotten anything? December, we have, um, um, not only are we doing the holiday meal on the 8th, but we have Mick Mahoney coming in and he's doing entertainment. So that'll be a fun day. And then the, the Tuesday before that, the first Tuesday of December, we're going to try, it's a, it's bingo with Brookdale. They're coming in-house. So we have like a hybrid again, in-house and Zoom. And that always seems to be, you know, pretty fun, pretty popular. So I think that's it. Unless anybody has any questions. I do want to say something, Linda, I think you deserve a huge round of applause for first seeking out this new meal plan, getting it rolling, and you've brought in, you've doubled your numbers since for the past couple of years, they were hovering around 15 and now you have 30. So I think that's huge and you deserve a huge pat on the back. Thank you. You're so sweet. It's a team effort all the way. I, I, you know, I really, I, I'm thankful that you and, and uh, you and Lisa put the three of us together because it really, we, we really love what we do. And the, the people are, you know, just thank God for them. Um, it's just, it's a challenge. And there's days where you're like, how are we going to pull this off? But you know what? We figured it out. And so thanks for your support. And I just hope we can keep doing it because, you know, who knows with this COVID, I don't even know what to make of it, quite frankly, but um, we're just going to try. We're going to keep trying. So. Great job. Thank you. Great job all around, everybody. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that or anything? Uh, if not, we open discussion. Any any issues? Anything we didn't cover? Okay. Uh, well, then uh, our next. Rosemary. Yeah. Right. I I do have one thing for open discussion. I added it a little late and didn't put it on my agenda, but I had another list of surplus equipment that um, I would like to move forward uh, getting approved to uh, put up for surplus. Um, and what is and what is that? Those all those benches, the ten dollar no, benches. No, these are uh, vehicles and surplus stuff that we have around the highway. Okay, so you want to you want to uh, list them for sale for sale? Yeah, I I just need uh, town board approval to to be able to auction them off. I included it in my attachments. Okay, uh, can you send that? I guess uh, to uh, Isma and Janet. Yep, I'll make sure they get a copy. Okay. okay. Those are the I'm sorry. sorry. Those are the same ones, Ray, that you just sold, or these are additional? Um, it's in this. I put it in with this packet, but it's a it's a new list for okay. a, additional sales. Okay. A, 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 any idea approximately? Because every bit helps. Well, that's why I'm doing it. But I don't I'm have. I'm proud it. of you. <laughs> Ray, I have the copy of the list, and I can share it. You don't need to send it again. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Janet. So is that the only resolution for the November 19th regular town board meeting this month? Yeah, for us it is. Everything else is uh, finance. Uh, yeah, so the, the purchases for the park stuff doesn't have to go through a resolution. It can just go through finance, right? Yeah, because they're contracts. Yep. Okay. Um, right, and then the potential licensing agreements, Alexis. Yeah, I think that would probably be December, but I can include it. Yeah, just thinking out loud as you're going through those. Those are the only other potential ones. Um, okay. In terms of just it scheduling our meeting for December, 
Uh, the executive order authorizing remote meetings expires tomorrow, and everyone anticipates that Governor Cuomo will continue to renew that executive order. Um, I know a lot of committees are kind of just at this point, besides the town board, are kind of just going to plan on meeting remotely since it's working for everyone, it seems like. So I think that we should plan on doing so for December. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine with me. Of course, we can change gears. I, I feel like actually more people are, you know, we get more participation. Um, I'm more likely to get people attending by doing these things remotely. Again, I keep inviting people <laughs> and I'll continue to do so. Um, so yeah, thanks for Le that for Alexis uh, for reminder. We'll, so our next meeting will be December 2nd, uh, 8 a.m. And as Alexis noted, uh, most likely remotely. Um, and thank you everybody for everything you're doing every day uh, to make our town a great place that it is. Um, and I'll see you all next time around. Uh, can we get a motion to adjourn? I will motion to adjourn. Second. I second. All right, thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, anybody opposed? I doubt it. Um, all right, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ray, can you stay on and maybe Isma and Janet too? I just have a quick question. We stop recording. No, oh, did I miss them? Looks like you missed.